Dear learners, my name is Parag Dutta, Associate Professor, Department of Economics, Krishnakanda Hindi, State of University. So today, in this class, we will discuss about the paradigm of development. So this is basically your unit one of your course, Economics of Development, MA, first semester. So in this lectures, basically, we will cover the following topics, introduction, where we will try to see both traditional perspective and new welfare perspective of development then development paradigm its emergence we will also try to discuss capital development to plan industrialization the role of development state the role of international organization and along with that the discussion will be made on alternative strategies for industrialization whether we should go for import substitution versus export promotion now we will start with traditional perspective of development which is we call conventional approach it basically defines you know economic development as a economic phenomena so in the traditional approach economic development means constant improvement in each gross national product now if gross national product increases more than 5 to 7 percent then we can say that you know there is some economic growth happens so along with that uh, the traditional approach of economic growth, uh, it assumes that along with economic growth, the share of agriculture sector gradually comes down and this will be substituted by development in the share of secondary and tertiary sector. Now, a new approach of development emerged during 1950s. Now, who are the those economics who is basically contributed towards that development? Now, in that case, we have to mention the name of Jacob Viner, who basically links the process of economic growth with declining poverty ratio. We can also discuss about Charles B. Kindelberger and Bruce Herrick who mentioned that you know the process of economic development basically includes some material welfare gains especially for those who belong to lower income section of the society. Along with that the new approach of economic development give emphasis on the following issues that is eradication of poverty, illiteracy, different diseases, early death, changes, composition of input and output that shifted production pattern from agriculture to industry. So these are basically some of the issues is basically included in the modern approach of economic development. Now we will discuss about emergence of development paradigm. Uh, it, it basically means a set of modalities that, that countries need to follow to achieve the path of development. Now what is development? As we have already mentioned, you know, it basically implies that you know some elements of the society uh, access to the made goods education health and along with that there is some improvement in different indicators now the, if we you know follow the above mentioned criteria which i have already mentioned we can easily say that you know development is a multi-dimensional concept which exhibits changes in the complex socio-economic system and it always considered as a holistic exercise now, what are the possible dimension of development? So, whenever we are talking about economic development, it is always multi-dimensional and you know, the dimensions are basically along with GNP, that means gross national product, we have to concentrate on other improvement in say health, education and those other issues which brings overall development to the society. Now, in this context, we can quote uh, the famous economics Ram, Ram Se, which basically says that you know development basically optimizes the con consumption of the future generation with the help of endogenous savings. We can also you know give the reference of Solo which presented the long run growth model that depicts when there is an increase in capital the productivity of labor increases and that results to economic growth. The Romar in his paper which was published in 1986 he put forward the endogenous growth model which basically proposes the role of investment and human activities that would have positive impact on knowledge. So in this context, you know, we should need to discuss about the human development index. So now, you know, in case of economic development, the human development is the main element until and unless we give proper emphasis on human development, you know, that means it implies that you know that kind of economic development will not lead to a growth which is not will not lead to a growth that will that will be inclusive 
Now, whenever you are talking about human development, we basically concentrate on human development index, which is basically again a multi-dimensional concept. These are the these are the criteria, these are the factors on the basis of which human development index is basically calculated. So, what is the first one? The first one is that you know long and healthy life. It is basically measures you know life expectancy at birth. The second parameter is knowledge. So, whenever we are talking about knowledge, basically we are concentrating on you know two factors. One education and second one is the gross enrollment ratio the third dimension of the human development index you know a decent standard of living so these are basically the parameters on the basis of which we can calculate the human development index and human development index the higher value of human development index it implies that you know it, it leads to more economic development that means economic development which encompasses higher human development leads to improvement welfare of the society now along with human development index we, we can also mention you know the united nations uh, millennium summit 2000 2000 that advocated for you know eight goals which are basically known as millennium development goals which they you know they they set a target that those goals should be achieved uh, by the year 2015 so what are those goals there are basically eight goals the first one is that I think all of you know uh, eradication of extreme poverty and hunger. The second one is that you know active universal primary education. The third one is promote gender equity and empower women. The fourth one is reduce child mortality. The fifth one is improve mental health. The sixth goal of the Millennium Development Goal is the combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Seven one is to ensure environmental sustainability. And last but not the least, the last goal of, uh, the last millennium development goal is to develop a global partnership for development. Now, whenever you are talking about economic development, any kind of development, it required capital accumulation. Now, whenever you want to accumulate capital, there are various approaches. So, what are those approaches? Capital accumulation may be through plan industrialization or in a traditional uh, aggregate economy. It is basically, you know, giving more emphasis on agricultural sector. Now, what basically it happens, what is the process of capital accumulation? Capital accumulation basically implies, you know, whenever we are talking about asset, an asset increases as a result of increasing investment. Now, whenever you want to accumulate capital, it, it should be through investment. So, increasing investment results in enhancements of profit that, you know, enlarges the scope of capital base. Whenever you are talking about uh, the issue of capital accumulation, it basically involves three aspects. Investment in fixed capital, portfolio investment, and investment in assets like housing. Now, uh, I think all of you know, you know, the famous economics uh, professor, Joan Robinson. So, in her book on accumulation of capital, the economics that uh, she shows that, you know, the rate of growth of capital is capable of increasing if the net return of capital rise in greater proportion than the capital labor ratio and in Ricardian terms it means that you know capital accumulation is strengthened by a fall in the real wage rate. Now if development is considered to be the main issue for any welfare state then what is the role of developmental state? What is the role of welfare state? Now if you see that you know any kind of economic system is basically determined by two organization market and state. Now, the, now any kind of government any kind of state they have to decide you know uh, which, which should be the dominant when the market should be dominant market will decide the ultimate goal of the state or you know the state intervention now uh, Douglas North the institution he basically said that you know institution are a role in a society where an organization is the functional body that acts on specific purpose and but it should be mentioned that you know both market and state are primarily organization. Now, what is market? Market is a kind of organization where production and consumption of goods and services take place voluntarily and based on free will of the consumer and producer. Now, what is state? State is an organization that monopolizes a legitimate power. State applies its power to coordinate the, the activities in accordance with the rules and regulation. Now, if you see, you know, if you give the example of classical economics like Adam Smith, and the neoclassical, they basically advocated for market system where there is a you know, free competition that will ensure the optimum allocation of resources.
but after that you know the keynesian revolution comes and it was assumed that you know there in in keynes in his writings he have mentioned that you know along with market there is some kind of need of government intervention for functioning of the economy now next we will discuss about the role of international organization nowadays if you see you know lots of international organization they have a huge role to play to bringing economic growth particular for a underdeveloped countries so whenever we are talking about role of international organization uh, we should not forget the role of the imf so what is imf international monetary fund so in this in this context the role of uh, international organization we can, you can refer the economics deepak nayar who basically defines you know the globalization as expansion of economic activities across political boundaries so, so when there is a in expansion of activities across political boundaries so that is why the role of international organization also increase many fold now imf is as i have already mentioned in international monetary organization is always considered as a lender of last resort it basically promote economic stability among the member countries otherwise what will happen those countries who fall into debt trap they would plunge into financial crisis to so, so their function their you know activity is to bring those countries to help those countries to fight financial crisis now there are most of the countries uh, they are basically member of the international monetary fund and they are you know the contribution of each of the country is depends upon the size of the economy the larger size of the economy larger the contribution which is basically called quota so quota determines the share of the vote and and collected fund the share of the vote and whatever fund collected by the organization are distributed among the member countries for balance of payment crisis and fall in foreign exchange reserve now world bank is another agency you know to promote economic development it basically promotes long term economic development and poverty eradication so world bank is basically uh, constituted to recommend a specific projects such as building schools health centers providing safe drinking water and electricity fighting diseases and protection of environment now if you see the organization structure of world bank it's it's quite huge it consists of you know over 1 lakh employees and having offices in more than 120 countries now more than 12000 projects basically you know mostly concentrated to reduce poverty to 3% of by the year 2030 who lives less than 2 dollar or you know this is basically function is to promote uh, prosperity now we all, all notice that you know there there is a need of reconstruction after the post war and gives, and world bank has played a very important role in that aspect next ilo that is international labor organization ilo is is a part of treaty of versailles geneva switzerland it basically promotes social justice and human rights ilo frames a set of labor standard and convention for welfare of the labor force initially it have 45 countries and now if you see the member of international labor organization it already crossed more than 187 countries now 300 employees from more than 100 national they are basically working for ilo and their ultimate objective is to promote the dignity of labor and ensure social justice so the challenge for ilo is that the informal economy absorb more than half of the global economy which results in poor working condition and absence of rights low quality of employment and absence of social protection so the function of ilo is to reduce those social problems now we will discuss about you know what what are the alternative strategy alternative strategy for development so basically whenever we are talking about development we are basically concentrated on import substitution and export promotion now what is strategy a strategy means a general approach perspective that has greater scope than a policy strategy is implemented is through a set of policies now import substitution and export promotion are basically you know policy which which is applied for bringing economic development now import substitution is basically known as inward looking policy and export promotion is basically known as outward looking policy so import substitution means you know uh, imposing of tariff quota and other form of uh, trade restrictions and export policies are basically uh, neutral towards state it it try to encourage export and both import so in export promotion government offers several subsidies concession to promote goods that are 
exportable and subsequently on foreign exchange. Now, you know, while, you know, condition of the any country while adopting those kind of policies, they have to have a make a decision whether they should go for export promotion or import substitution because, you know, it depends upon the condition of the country. So, these are the issues we have discussed in this class. Initially, we are start with traditional perspective versus new welfare perspective. Next, we discuss about developmental paradigm and its emergence. Then, you know, capital development through plan industrialization, the role of developmental state, the role of international organization, and last but not the least, alternative strategies for industrialization, whether we should go for import substitution or export promotion. So, thank you for attending the class. Thank you.